Talk Radio. All right, well, welcome to another edition of Working Web to Win. I'm your host, Carl White. With me is co-host Hector the Connector Cisneros. Hello, everybody. And today we have two special guests. We have sitting next to me, to my right, we have Carrie Knight with Tub King. And we also have teleported in Ashley Beatty with Kiwi Wearables. All right. How are you guys doing? Hello, everybody. Great, thank you. Well, today's episode is actually called New Tech for the New Year, but I have a better name for it, Hector. What's that? What happens in Vegas? Because a big part of what we're going to be talking about is what happened at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, where there is an awful lot of really cool high-tech toys. Yeah. And we'll be talking about some of that. Um, But before we do, I'd like Hector to provide everybody with the call-in number in case they want to join in the conversation. So, friends out there in cyber world, you can call in as a guest at 213-943-3808. That's 213-943-3808. Of course, you can also find us on workinthewebtowin.com. You can also find us on Working the Web to Win, the blog, and about a dozen other websites. And I don't want to take up the whole show on it, but that's... that's yeah, we only have 30 minutes here, so we <laughs> got to keep things brief. Uh, but before we get started, also, I want to just thank again our sponsors. We have uh, Via e-cigarettes, and we, of course, have... Okay. Right. And as a matter of fact, some people would say, well, why are you bringing in the tub dude when you're doing a tech <laughs> episode? Well, what you don't realize is that Tub King actually has some high tech really tubs. Tub? Walk in tubs are, are quite high tech. Matter of fact, I'll queue up their little website right here. Um, can you tell us a little about some of the technology that's involved in your walk in tubs. Well, for years, the person was immobilize, Mm -hmm. for example, a senior, and had to be bathed by either a family member or someone that's a healthcare professional. Mm -hmm. It became real inconvenient. I guess about 10 years ago, it was introduced into this country, the concept of independent bathing, Mm -hmm. where a senior or whoever actually walk into a bathtub Mm -hmm. Through a door. Yeah, they actually have a little door on these things. That's right. And it's watertight. They sit down with any fear of falling. Right. Which is very important. Close the door and it's watertight, mm-hmm. guaranteed for life not to leak. Mm-hmm. And bathe without any assistance from anyone. Right. Plus, there's also some high tech uh, options, also, like uh, uh, the hydrotherapy jets. That's right. In addition to the soaking tub, which is just sitting and bathing. Mm-hmm. There's what we call the air jets, which creates thousands of therapeutic bubbles Mm -hmm. that treats a lot of medical conditions. And you also have the water jets, which acts more like the swirling water that massages the body. Right. And uh, works on the back and the shoulders and the knees and the hips. And uh, that also comes with an inline heater. Yeah, that's what keeps the water warm so they can stay in the bathtub longer. Yeah, one of the things I hate is when you're in the tub and all of a sudden you run out of hot water. Yeah. Kind of ruins it. But one thing that was, uh, I think, the germ to creating this mm-hmm. was the fact that over 30,000 people every year fall in the bathtub. Right. Break their hips and all that. I remember my mother did it one time and I heard this big thump and I ran in there to try and figure out. And then my mom was really heavy and I had a hell of a time just getting her to, Back to out stand of, up so yeah. I could get her out of the tub. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's she was it. really lucky she didn't. She didn't break a hip or something. It can be very dangerous, even fatal, because yeah. in the bathroom you got ceramic tile floors and you've got mm-hmm. sometimes iron bathtubs. Right. And hitting in the wrong spot could be. So now we have technology to cure all those problems. Yeah. And speaking of technology, let's let's get on with our, our little broadcast here. Uh, where do you want to start, Hector? Well, I'd like to really just talk about some of the new and exciting things that, that are uh, the CES. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the show there, they had all kinds of really stuff, uh, cool things. The big deal that was out there was a big deal. Okay. And that's a 120-inch... Oh, yeah. <laughs> big screen TV. <laughs> big screen TV. Which, <laughs> reality, if you took one of those and put it in your house, 120 inches in a lot of houses, it won't even fit against the wall because it's too tall. Might not even get it through the but door. But that was a big wow over there. <laughs> and then the other thing is the curved screen TVs is a new thing. Mm-hmm. And then the super high definitions, the 4K right. TVs that are like four times as the resolution that we have now. So that was... a Part of the biggest deal out there, the curve is really big now. So right. they have these new curved cell phones that are flexible that you can sit on them and not worry about breaking them and all that kind of stuff because a lot of people like to have them in their back pocket. Sure. 
they also had a lot of other things because one of the things I noticed that they had several models of were the head-up displays, yeah. like the Oculus Rift. So, I mean, a lot of the things today, they're actually changing the ways in which we interface with all our computers, yeah. our gaming consoles. Google, Google Glass copycats up the yin-yang. Exactly. Well, last year they were they were it, right? Yeah. And, and now there's, there's all kinds of, of copies of them and people that are actually taking the technology in a different direction. I mean, I, uh, wearables is getting to be a very so, big player today. That was one of the big things, wearables, the watches with, with cameras in them. They had earrings with cameras in them and all kinds of spy <laughs> tech toys. I mean, there was really off That the can wall. get you in trouble in Las Vegas, by the way. They had a lot of really <clears> crazy <throat> stuff. Um, there were really cool things. You know, when you see the reporters talking about, one of the things that they were wild about was, was uh, something we had on a show couple of weeks ago, which was all the drones. Right. We were going, I got for drones. Yeah. And they had a lot of consumer ones that you could buy for 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks. Right. And they had cameras built in them so you could take them on your backyard and film your next door neighbor and that kind of crazy stuff. Yeah, well, you know, and that's, that's one of the reasons also that we invited Ashley on our show is because of the fact that uh, he, his company, Kiwi Wearables, produces a very interesting kind of device. And what I like to do is, is introduce uh, not only Ashley, but also his product, which is is very interesting. It's called the Kiwi Move. And what's kind of interesting, you've seen a lot of the uh, devices that they have, like the wristbands that will you know, monitor your heart rate and if you're running, how many steps you're taking. But the thing is, of course, you've got to wear it on your wrist. Right. What's interesting about the, the product that Ashley has is the fact that, that it, it looks kind of like something. Remember the old Star Trek? Right. They had the, the, yeah, a little badge that you put on. Yeah, because you can put it on. You can put it on under your collar. You right. can put it on your wrist. You can put it on your leg. But the thing that really kind of interested me about about Ashley is the fact that he went from being a naval maritime surface officer to getting into working with this new startup. Tell us a little bit about your background and what led you from being on the high seas to being high tech. Okay, well, certainly, uh, you know, it's 11 years ago I joined the Naval Reserve here in Canada, and I joined as a maritime service officer, and uh, I trained to be essentially a navigator slash, slash warship driver. And uh, I did that as Naval Reserve for a couple of years, and then I transitioned away from the seagoing role into more of a more like a managerial operational intelligence kind of role inside the organization working on various strategic endeavors. And uh, after doing that for a little while, I ended up uh, deciding that, you know, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I got the entrepreneur bug probably the 2010 or so, and this was when social media was out. So I uh, started a social media consultancy and uh, some social network analysis kind of products we developed them so that we could essentially identify influencers on Twitter. And uh, that product went a little ways, but it, it essentially, I was limited by the fact that I didn't know how to code. I didn't really know how to put lines of code down and actually create my own application. So back in, this was in February of last year, I took a programming course in Toronto called Fitnick the Lab. And out of that, I learned how to be a Ruby on Rails developer. And then from there, I... Uh, the week after I finished the course, I joined a hackathon here in Toronto, the computer programming competition called Angel Hack Toronto. And out of that, uh, I met the guys who were on Team Kiwi, actually. So uh, I, I went to the hackathon, and I met these guys who were building a heart rate monitor, and I was very interested in this. It was something I'd worked on during my MBA. And I thought, you know what, this is a good team. I'll work with these guys. And as it turned out, we ended up winning the competition and uh, decided to start a business. And uh, the, the heart rate monitor we had built uh, essentially took a, an algorithm for arrhythmia detection. And uh, if you detect arrhythmia, essentially what you're doing is you're giving someone who's got this detector on a 3 to 13 hour head start on a heart attack. So it was a really interesting wearable device that we had built at this hackathon. However, the research suggested that we were probably about 16 months to market. So mm -hmm. out of that, we were like, what can we build? Actually, let me let me do this. Let me let me. I'm actually going to play your little video here. So the way the device works is that it detects micro motion. So as you wake up, it detects that, and then using a simple rules interface, which we have as an application called When Do. So when I wake up. What do I want to make as part of my wake-up routine? So in this case, here in the video, the guy has uh, his coffee machine start when he wakes up. It's something that just what everybody does as part of their morning routine. So think of the device as something that is essentially enabling you to make your routines and your
your daily life a little bit more efficient. So he uh, he then leaves the house and he could activate his security system. So that's something else that people do routinely. Um, and we just have to start thinking about, you know, these little things that we do in terms of motion that we can essentially turn into higher level activities. Um, the device also has a voice recorder on it, so the ability for you to either record a voice note or take that text and turn it, as the young lady does, into a grocery list or uh, a nutrition uh, and it also, if I'm not mistaken, on. Ashley, uh, it, it also interfaces with your smartphone, so you can also run apps as well, correct? Yeah, yeah. So the device has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on it. So whether you're interacting with your smartphone or uh, doing things at your house where you can connect with Wi-Fi or through your smartphone, you can essentially use it as like a remote control for any application. That's what she does in the video. Because when you essentially program in a gesture like she does, it can load up a certain application on your phone. So I think that's a really interesting take on wearable because not only does it something that they capture information, but also being able to control external devices. Well, that was one of the things that I found that I was at the show. There was a big jump on voice commands mm -hmm. and Bluetooth, two of the big things that they were like shoving into every device that you can imagine. So now you buy a refrigerator, and the refrigerator, you can talk to the refrigerator. Oh, yeah. Or it calls home and says, hey, I need service. Of course, I don't have to worry about somebody hacking your refrigerator, right. too. You know, one, one of the things I thought was interesting is, you know, how they have Wi-Fi? Well, now they've developed something called Li-Fi. And what it is is it's it's a, a light-based Wi-Fi system, but it's much faster. You were going to say it lies to me. No, no, it, it's based on a laser. Instead of using, instead of using, you know, radio waves, they're using right. lasers to do it. It kind of works on the same thing as the fiber optic cables. You know, they've gone from a lot of the. But does it have to be line of sight, or is it actually using a cable? It's not using a cable. It's actually being broadcast. So I guess you would. It's almost like what you have when you have like a uh, uh, like a burglar alarm that have a motion sensor detector where it'd be up in the corner and broadcast. The broadband so signal to everybody. That's right. You can get, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But like I said, they're, they're always coming up with, with uh, new ideas that are either meant to give you extra capabilities or, in this case, uh, to, you know, give you more broadband capabilities. Because that's one thing that, that's taken a long time to really filter down to everybody are, are the high-speed communications, broadband capabilities. And it's like, you know, it's, it used to be like before, we would take you a half hour just to load a... Uh, a graphic right. and now you can watch your movies in real time and one of the things that was interesting to me about the the CES show is that there was a lot of interest in spy spy tech type mm -hmm. stuff and really it's sort of counter surveillance spy stuff oh yeah because again you look at the news right now and you got the NSA you know spying on everybody mm -hmm. and, and getting two two million text messages a day that they're they're sucking down and so on and you see a lot of stuff coming out so one of the things that was released recently was an encryption system to put on your Android phone that would encrypt text messages mm -hmm. so that hopefully they can't read them. But there were a lot of things at the uh, the CES show itself were geared towards either surveillance or counter surveillance. And I think all of that is because we're in a society right now that's we're being bombarded by surveillance. I mean, domestic spying is a big deal. Oh, yeah, in fact, we're going to have an upcoming episode in a couple of weeks on that very topic, all the different ways in which people are watching you. In fact, sometimes you have to be careful about your laptop because you see the little camera in there. I don't know if you know this, but there are actually ways for somebody to turn that camera on when you're right. not even where it's on. Right. And, and now they've got cameras in just about everything. So you got them in your watches. you got them in your glasses. They're everywhere. you got them in earrings. Right. I mean, they got them in your car. You know, <laughs> they're in everything. And one of the big, the big news flashes was Ford was talking about their new cars and stuff like that. And one of them, I said, you know, we have GPS in your cars, and we pretty much know what you're doing. Then up a bunch of red flags for mm -hmm. a lot of people because now they can spy on you because you're driving in a new car. That's right. Yeah. Well, so, the thing, too, is, is as the cars become more web-enabled, right. that also means that somebody can hack your car. Right. And all of these things. So <laughs> when we're talking about it. The, the I'm not making this up. I swear. Yeah, this is, the this upcoming is show, where we'll be talking about <laughs> hacking and all those kinds of things. Again, this is a big issue that's. People really are not paying attention to very closely. Mm. They understand hacking and all that, but they don't understand that their coffee pot could be hacked. Right. I mean, that's a, and it doesn't seem like a stupid thing, but it it could be a huge nuisance if you turn the coffee pot and it overflows and it, you know, electricity gets caught on fire and your house burns down. There's all kinds of crazy stuff that can happen, and if they hacked your car or they hacked the, the lights, 
Right. You turn them red when you're trying to go through them. Those are real things that can happen. And the hacking tools are free, if not next to free, to anybody who wants them. So it's going to be a big issue. And if we don't think it was a big problem before, the wake-up call should have been when Target and what's the Nordstrom's got hacked. Mm -hmm. Millions of accounts. Yeah. Well, you know. That's just the, the portents of what's coming. You know, That's the CES thing. isn't the only big show that makes Las Vegas on a a yearly basis. There's also one called the Black Hat Convention. I don't know if right. you're familiar with that, Carrie, but that's literally where all the bad guys go to hawk their wares. Yeah. And, yeah. They, and they do it for everybody. It's in the open. Yeah. So anybody can go in there and buy their stuff. <laughs> and just about any kind of magical hacking tool you can think of, like those little postage stamps, uh, scanners yeah. that they can put on things so, so when you bring your card by, it, it picks up the codes right. so then they can make your card copy. Yeah. I mean, all that stuff is available and it's a huge problem. But most people are not really reporting it. They're talking more about the NSA well, the and not about the hackers. And one of the things that I saw that was a, it was a really neat uh, graphic, or cartoon, I should say, it's got Obama talking. It says, uh, bulk data should not be held outside government hands. And then the, the guy next to it is a hacker guy. says, it already is. he got a big picture of Target. But they, <laughs> <laughs> but they done whacked them for all that kind of stuff. And that's it's going to be, I've already predicted that this year, this is going to be a much bigger year mm -hmm. for hacking than it was last year. And last year was huge. Yeah. Well, so, you know, you know what it is? The, the problem is, is that you've got a lot of people, a lot of companies that are developing a lot of products that are web enabled. But they're not putting security. Exactly. That's they're completely the insecure. Is, is that is that going to be a problem for the uh, Kiwi move as far as uh, being hacked? No. Well, I think, okay, so I, I don't, I say this with caution, right, is that, just with anything, as you guys have said already, can't be hacked. So whether it's your car, whether it's your cell phone, we're, we're, we're seeing on a daily basis more stuff from you know, these government agencies and as well as these professional hacking groups. They can get into just about anything. Now, we have taken a, an approach with Kiwi is that we're, we're open by design, but we're also enabling you, the user, to do with what you want with the data. So think of it more as like an opt-in where you know you're going to essentially enable other apps to be used rather than an opt-in where we hold the data and then we want to essentially either charge you for it or give it to you in small bite-sized paid doses. And this is one of the, this is one of the major issues I find with wearables right now. Is the access to data just isn't available. Um, we we definitely take privacy very seriously, and we being in Ontario and being in Canada, taking the privacy by design legislation very seriously. And that's just something that we have to hold in trust, and we'll continue to do that. As yeah, we but but really, the, the only way that you can absolutely positively provide security is not to be connected to the Internet today. You know, I guess one thing good about your bathtubs, right? You can't hack a bathtub, can you? Yeah, let me call Mike and find out. He's our tech guy. <laughs> I'm not sure. I know that in Japan, because we, we wrote, I remember you wrote an article last year about the toilets. Yeah, the high-tech toilets. That are connected to the Internet. It's sort of crazy, <laughs> but the Japanese like to connect. They like all the bells and whistles. They yeah, like to connect they do. everything to the internet. So, but the, again, we were talking about the wearables. The bots were a big deal mm -hmm. at the show this year, and again, we've just we've done at least two or three shows on mm -hmm. robotics because robotics is just taking off. Google has, has bought six four, six now companies, six robotic companies because uh. they really they figure they're going to want to be like was a movie I Robot where it was uh, U.S. Robotics. But it's going to be really Google. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they it's bought up the, several of the, the, the big dogs, including, by the way, Big Dog, which was right. a, <laughs> a well, robot. Robots. Yeah. Uh, but, but one of the things that I have up on my screen right now is Baxter, because the, the whole point is I mean, people are, like, used to the little little droids that run around the floor cleaning right. your, your carpets, like Roomba and stuff right. like that. And these things look like, you know, crazy-looking things. But well, now they're getting... Fat Frisbee, right? Yeah, they're, they're getting more and more humanoid-looking. In fact, Baxter is a $20,000 robot that you can literally work cheek to jowl. In other words, you can stand right next to this thing and you show it how to pack boxes or whatever you want to do. And it does. And then you walk away and he does it, but he's he's also trained. He's got he's actually got a camera so he looks back and forth so if you happen to come up next to him he won't knock into next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. That was always a problem with a lot of the industrial robots right. is they used to build these big cages around them because but, if you got in their the real in their big plus on this site, one is it learns from you. It learns. The other ones you had to sit there yeah. and program it. These ones actually just watches you and learns from it. And so that's a huge step. And also, the $20,000 price tag may sound like a lot of money. That's cheap. That's right. I mean, yeah. most of these industrial robots are millions of That's dollars. That's right. Baxter might replace our warehouse guy. Hey. Could happen. 
<laughs> what a way to be fired. <laughs> hey, Baxter, come on in. Are you watching so the show? <laughs> um, a couple other things that were sort of funny. You know, this year, you've seen a lot of people doing these selfie images. Right, that's the, know, the, that's the new. The president doing it at the yeah. last funeral or whatever it was and so on. And now that's the new both, buzzword, selfies. Yeah, so they take these self-portraits, if you will. And then there's these sites that you can log in and then make yourself look better. That's like a big deal. Oh, yeah, now. yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll do um, a facelift on, online. Right. But now the me generation is also going in and then they're making their selfie websites. Yeah. Which is a self expression website. So they talk about things, you know, they have their selfie blog or their selfie site and so on. That was a big thing there. Um, and, you know, all the other cool tech toys that you can think of, other than the TVs and the smartphones. Well, I have one here I wanted to kind of talk about I'll because, because you know, we, we actually did a... Uh, Is it the printer? Yes, we actually did an episode a little while ago on 3D printers. And, I mean, 3D printers are kind of interesting, and, and they're getting more and more technically capable all the time because now you can actually print organs, you can print ears, right. you can print prosthetics with them. But the one thing that they didn't have that all of our normal printers have is what? A scanner. Well, now they've actually introduced technology where you actually have a scanner. So if you if you wanted to copy a device, like let's say you wanted to copy that mug, you could actually put that inside the scanner. It would scan it, and it goes to the cloud, and within a couple of minutes, it prints you out another mug. They, they, they were actually demonstrating this at the CES, and, and they were doing like a picture of somebody's face, and they, they literally did a 3D face. There was using, another thing that I saw also at the, at the CES. Uh, up until now, most of the 3D devices were... We're, you have to be an engineer for the most right. part to use them. There are new ones coming out that are relatively low cost that are coming out through different, you know, crowdfunding mechanisms mm -hmm. that are plug and play. Right. So you, for your thousand dollars, you get one. You hook it up to your Windows machine and you're ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that simple. So, be the scanner and then the plug and play piece. A lot of things are not going to be sold in stores soon. Mm -hmm. Especially parts, replacement parts, right. like that, because a lot of these printers can actually print metal components and so on. A lot of the glass components or the different kinds of high-tech materials can replace parts that, you know, book. It's, it's, it's definitely pieces. the next wave, and, and like I said, they're yeah. getting more and more capable. They, I've seen them print food, uh, more cheeseburger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those are, those are some of the really coolest <clears throat> things that are happening out there. Um, I know that... Uh, if you if you ever been to one of these shows, and I have, I haven't gone to it in a couple of years, but the last time I went, I mean, there's so much to see. You're really overwhelmed when you're walking around. This, this hey, you're like a kid in the candy store. Oh, yeah. and you ever go to one of those, Terry? Uh, it's been a while. They used to have a similar show up in Atlanta, but right. I, I've been to the one on the West Coast. And again, if you go there, you're just overwhelmed with all the really cool stuff. They're not as good as the one when I was younger going to because they used to give you all kinds of stuff. You go, right. you get samples yeah. of everything. Right. Not quite like that now anymore, but the amount of things that are happening this year's show, from what I'm understanding, is far exceeding last year's show in new inventions. Apparently, 2013 was really not very good on innovation. Mm -hmm. Apparently, 2014 is with the launch of all the stuff that was happening. Well, one one of the things that's also helping a lot of the entrepreneurs and the inventors now are a lot of these crowdfunding sites. You know, a couple of years ago, they weren't very prevalent or they weren't very powerful. But, I mean, there have been companies that have raised literally millions of dollars right. using crowdfunding. Right. You want to fund your, your next movie? Because one of the things mm. Kerry does also is he writes screenplays. You know, you could actually fund movies. You go to Indiegogo? Right. Go for it. Absolutely. Get your funding right there. Do you uh, do any uh, crowdfunding for uh, okay. Kiwi Move? Uh, no, we actually didn't. Uh, we launched a pre-order campaign, uh, but we, we actually decided against crowdfunding. Uh, we, we, we definitely see merits in it, but right. at this point, we accept the pre-orders. Well, the, our last guest on the last show, they actually did crowdfunding on the dog tongue brush, <laughs> and they got $60,000 in pre-orders. And by the time they actually started filling orders, they had already sold a quarter of a million dollars. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of tongue brushes for dogs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we can't make this stuff up, Carrie. I swear to. You. Yeah, so the crowdfunding thing was just it, what that did was just put it on the map, and once it was on the map, then they sold it like it was going out of style. Oh yeah. Mm. And I mean, they have some really out there stuff. One of the ones that I have here, which was actually uh, brought to me, brought to my attention by our uh, associate producer, Robert K, was a self-balancing single-wheeled electronic skateboard. It's gyroscopically controlled. Single wheel. 
Yeah, it's got one wheel, and it's you be pretty wild, huh? you stand on the platform, and you lean one way, and it goes one way. You lean the other way, it goes the other way. It's got this big fat tire on it, you know, which is basically the only way you'd ever get me on a skateboard. No, they have, just have to do it like in Men in Black Three, where you stand on it and it look. Well, that's what it does. It's motorized. It is motorized. Ah. It is. Yeah, that's that's exactly how it works. It's, it, I mean, it, 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 like I said, this is one of those things that they actually had at the the uh, Consumer Electronics Show. So you never know what you're going to find there. I get if you've never been to one, it's 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 something you want to do once. I don't know if you'd want to do it every year <laughs> because again, it's it's very tired. I mean, the show itself is huge. I forget how many uh, three or four football fields in size. Gigantic. You know, so it's huge to go walk around. So, and, so that's why you need your one wheel self supported driver's back controlled skateboards. You can zoom around the aisles in there. Yeah. Hey, can I take it out for test drive? <laughs> well, one of the things I saw that they had there was these low low cost. You know. Uh, people mover devices mm -hmm. uh, that you stand on, like the the ones that came out several years ago. They were twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Right. These are the thousand dollar stand on ones type of thing. The so new that are coming out. But again, you go there, you need one of those machines to actually get around. If you can right. get one, and, and uh, I bet you by the next third or fourth show, we renting them. You'll be able to go in there, rent mm -hmm. a little device, and ride around on them. So, so we got about yeah the segways, right? Yeah, the segways. We got about two minutes left, so before we get uh, the show, I should say, I want to remind our guests that you can also go to the blog site mm -hmm. and go to the notes page, and all the notes for all the different stuff that we're talking about the show is, is there. You can find them there, and of course, you can find a lot of the videos and the links to the to the TV show. On working the web the window. And speaking of shows, I understand, Carrie, you're you're going to a show here in Jacksonville. You know, Jacksonville time. has the. Uh, annual home and patio show coming mm -hmm. up spring show uh, february 27th through march the 2nd i believe and we're going to be there we'll have a couple of booths uh, featuring our tubs so cool. the people can go by and take a visit take it for a test drive absolutely okay like fire up the bubbles <laughs> <laughs> hot tub time that's right they do love to get in them by the way yeah. and and we also may want to make sure we uh give a plug for a bae the electronic cigarette company, they're making products that can help people quit smoking. And a heck of a lot safer than real cigarettes. So right. I know there are, I forget how many millions, 34 million Americans are smoking cigarettes. So right. this is something that can help them get off that stuff. And, and of course, we also want to thank our, our other guest, uh, Ashley, with uh, Kiwi Wearables. In fact, if you go to the blog, you can not only see the link to their site, but you can also uh, play the video. Yeah. I put that on there as well. That's, That's the thing about nice. the Internet. Well, Ashley... Thanks, thanks a lot. Oh, our pleasure. Our pleasure. I mean, like I said, that's what we're all about, working the web to win. And, and you know, every week we take another bite out of the Internet. Yeah, a bite of the elephant, one at, one week at a time. Because, again, there's so much to learn and so much to do. And it's, a, it's an animal that's evolving as it goes along. And it's not going to stop. It's just getting bigger and bigger every year. We've been doing this now two years and one day. Wow. Because our anniversary was yesterday. And we never run out of material and, because and the and only <laughs> thing that's the sure thing online is change. Yeah, mm -hmm. change is the, the get-go. So. And it seems to be getting faster and faster, just faster like our episodes faster. seem to be getting faster and faster. Here we are down to the last 60 seconds. Right, well, 43 seconds and something. So. Um, just tell our guests uh, what's coming up next week. Yeah, well, actually, next week we're going to have, uh, it's going to be called Taking Your Medicine Online. We're going to be talking about a lot of the ways in which the internet and electronics has changed the way that the medical profession now works. So we'll be talking about telemedicine and remote control medicine. Telesurgery and all kinds of different things. So come back, stay tuned. surgery. That's right. And, uh, that kind of cool stuff. So until next week, guys, I just say keep working the web. Keep working the web to win.